In this video, we'll be using the Fantasy Grounds Classic 5th Edition rule set. And we're going to take a look at items, uh, the forge, and using parcels. Uh, so let's take a look first at an item record. So here along the right-hand side, we have our item record window. And I've set it to new. Let's create a new item entry. Now, items within Fantasy Grounds have a number of features. Uh, an item record has a number of fields associated with it. So these first few fields are all unformatted text, and uh, so they'll include descriptive in information. And then this bottom field is a actually a description field that is formatted text. So it will allow you to do things like um, bold, italics. It'll include any of the paragraph types discussed in, uh, that we introduced in a previous video, and uh, including links to images uh, or to, to anything else. So let's take a look at the various fields and what they do. Uh, up here at the top, of course, is our item name. Uh, let's say we're creating a treasure item in this case. Uh, we'll call this a gold uh, brooch. We've got ourselves a gold brooch. Now, we have an ID uh, button here up at the top, and this is to allow us to mark this item entry as unidentified. Now the purpose of that is to hide certain information from the players when this item is given to them. Uh, so this is commonly used within 5th edition to mark magic items so that the player doesn't know all of the properties of the item until they've had a chance to go through the process of attunement. Uh, so once they've attuned to the item, then it's uh, ID'd and they can see all of the properties associated with that item. So if it is unID'd, Right now it's marked as identified, so the players will be able to see the actual name as well as uh, uh, all the information about it. If it is unidentified, then we have the choice of either leaving this blank, this non-ID name, or we can put in something here. Uh, we could say this is a fine brooch without, uh, uh, brooch without giving any additional information about it. Or we can, uh, you know, a, just a piece of treasure. Uh, here on the notes, we can include some descriptive items, and then we get to type. Now, these type, subtype fields are important uh, for later on when we're talking about the forge and for uh, the items itself in order to, uh, for Fantasy Grounds to understand the items uh, properly. So let's take a look at, uh, first at the item. The item field for a lot of the gear that's in the player's handbook or, uh, or stuff is going to be adventuring gear. Now with that as your, your item type, uh, you'll just have access to the default fields. But there are several item types that uh, if you type them in, will cause Fantasy Grounds to expose uh, or show some additional fields, uh, properties that you can then fill out. So some examples of that are if I type in weapon and I hit tab, now you can see it's added some additional weapon-related fields, like a magical bonus, a damage string, if there's weapon properties associated with that weapon. Uh, I can also have armor, and then that adds some magical bonus to armor, and all of the standard 5th edition uh, armor-related traits, like how it affects your dex, how your dex bonus is uh, applied, any maximums there, strength required, uh, any impact on stealth, and any armor properties, which typically is just... Uh, nothing. Um, if it's magical armor, it may include the, the magic property. Uh, so that's your, your basic armor ones. And then there are a few others that add, there's a rod, staff, and wand that allow you to add a bonus. Um, and the purpose behind this is there are a small number of magical items that allow you to add a bonus to your spell casting. Um, and so that's why there is this rod, uh, staff, and wand uh, allow this additional bonus field to be added. But for a standard item, we're just going to do adventuring gear. And we won't have those additional items. For our subtype, you can put in what you would like. Uh, how, it, uh, use it, how it's used in the forge will depend on uh, some of the subtype entries. Um, so we'll cover that in just a second when we get to the uh, to the forge entry, uh, to the forge uh, field. But you can include things like um, a vial or a, uh, a 
subtype is a, a potion or, or whatever. Um, and then rarity follows the standard uh, fifth edition. You know, is it common, uncommon, rare, uh, and so forth. There's a variety of options that you can put into here for your item definition. If we go ahead and take a look at magic items, you'll see they often have rarity defined. For most of the mundane items, there, there will be no rarity defined. For your cost, you can put in the cost uh, that this item, or you can put in a range. Generally, I suggest you put in a direct cost itself. Um, so you can be like 30 gold pieces, and uh, that'll be good. And then the weight is in pounds. So if you say this is a one pound item, and then this descriptive field, you can include, you know, this item has A, B, C, whatever writ written on it. As well as you can include links to images. Let's say this has a, a, an image of a map associated with it. Uh, maybe it's a scroll or something that has a picture on it. And I can include that link so that when it's clicked, it'll go ahead and open up the image associated with it. So this is your basic item record. You'll have these series of fields that are unformatted. And then at the bottom, you'll have your formatted uh, field with its uh, descriptive elements. So when we're creating uh, new things like armors or weapons that, that have additional properties, let's go ahead and take a look at one of those and see how they're affected. So let's add my new poison dagger. And this will be a type of weapon and uh, subtype. Now, when it comes to weapons, most of the entries in 5th edition are going to be one of either simple melee, simple ranged, martial weapons, or martial ranged weapons. And the subtype that you select will determine how it's sorted in this weapons window. Now, you notice at the top of the items, there is this weapons. This allows you to, to have a nice window interface to look at the various weapons. And this value here is what's in the subtype. So if I go ahead and set this subtype as uh, simple melee weapons, and I'll close and reopen this, you'll see now my poison dagger will appear here in this simple melee weapons header. So I can set that. Uh, the rarity, I can just leave blank because it's not magical. Uh, cost will We'll say it's an expensive one, 50 gold gold pieces. And uh, it's some weight, half a pound. Bonus here is going to refer to the magic item bonus, as I said before. Now, when it comes to the damage string, this is not a magic weapon, so I'm leaving that as zero. When it comes to the damage string, I can put here in the damage string um, your, your typical, it's... Uh, dice roll, you know, your 1d6 uh, piercing damage. And if, in this case, I have a, a poison dagger, I can add additional ones, like by using the word plus uh, 1d4 poison damage. Uh, in fact, I think damage doesn't need to be in there. If there are properties associated with this item, for example, if we open up a normal dagger, you can see here under the properties, it has the finesse, light, throne, range uh, type properties. So I can include those as well. And uh, some of those are going to be interpreted uh, by Fantasy Grounds. For example, the, uh, the throne one will determine what uh, how Fantasy Grounds defines this weapon entry when it's added to a character sheet. So I'll show you that in just a second. So if I type in finesse, light, throne, 2060. All right, and then any description of the dagger. So I've got uh, the definition set up here. I've got my new poison dagger. Now, when I give this to a character, so let's give this to a character. See, he's got all of these items already added. So let's add this new poison dagger to his inventory and come back here to the actions tab. So we can see now poison dagger has been added both as a melee weapon and as a thrown weapon. 
It also has the properties of the piercing damage, the 1d6 piercing, and the 1d4 poison damage automatically included in it. Uh, so that has been automatically set up uh, once I give it to the character, just by setting up that information here. You do the same thing with uh, armor entries. You just fill out the additional fields uh, that appear when you have an armor entry. So that brings us to the next topic uh, for today's video, and that's uh, the forge. The forge is included within the fifth edition rule set as a way for you to combine a piece of equipment or an item record with a template record. Uh, so this is a way of making variations of items or making versions of uh, different magic items. For example, if I have a template that sets up a, a flame blade kind of capability where uh, the whatever weapon that is being used will add 2d6 fire damage to it. So what I can do here is I can create a template and create a new template record and we'll call this flame blade. It's a weapon. Now it's important that the weapon, that the type be uh, set correctly because Fantasy Grounds needs to be able to know how to combine these entries. Um, so we'll get the type set up if there is any cost associated with it. Basically any fields that are filled out in the template and the item entry, if there's an item entry field filled out, it will not use the template entry. Um, otherwise it will copy everything over. So we'll add, add a rarity. We'll say this is rare. Uh, if there is a rarity defined, because it's a magic item, it will go ahead and calculate a new cost um, and automatically generate a cost. So let's say this template adds a plus one bonus and it adds a 2d6, not 2d76, 2d6 fire damage to it. Uh, and then some kind of description. All right, so now we have this uh, flame blade template set up here and uh, we have our weapons. Now the nice thing about this template is, is that I can take any weapon, uh, I'm gonna take a mace, um, and then I'm gonna apply my flame blade template to it. So I've got a, a normal mace, I've got a flame blade template, I can forge the magic item. And you can see here it's combined the two. So it's uh, automatically generated a cost. It does not do the damage. You'll notice that because it does not override the existing damage field. So this is something that you would uh, need to have the, the descriptive, descriptive elements included here, or the base weapon would have to have the damage field as blank. If the base uh, weapon had the damage field blank, it would have copied over the, uh, the information here. But this can be uh, quickly added here if necessary, plus um, 2d6 fire damage. Uh, things like uh, the weight were pulled from the, the base stat. So this is a way of the creating it. Now let's say we want to have more than one. Uh, so let's say instead of just a single mace, we want to have a mace, a dagger, a hand axe, and a quarter staff that are all flame blade. So I can have multiple items here on my equipment list and I can go ahead and click forge and it'll generate a new version of each of those entries. So now I have my flame blade quarterstaff, hand axe, mace, and dagger. So as you can see here, the forge is extremely powerful and it allows us to uh, very quickly generate a, a large variety uh, of items based on the various templates that we can design and build. And these can be uh, weapon templates, armor templates, um, and many other types of templates. Now, it's important to note whether or not our equipment item and our template type will be compatible with one another. So for example, if I were to have a equipment of a dagger, uh, let's grab a, a dagger here, and I have a template, let's create a new template here, and I have an armor template and I add my armor template here to the right hand side. If I attempt to forge them, it will give me an error because they're incompatible. Uh, and that's because Fantasy Grounds 
has very specific rules for what it considers compatible here in the Forge. So the rules, uh, there is a posting, which I'll include the link to below, uh, there is, on the Fantasy Grounds forum that goes over the rules. But there are uh, certain specific rules. There's a, a variety of different compatibility types. Now, each item entry, or item record, and each template record, uh, depending on the fields that are filled out, will be assigned a different a specific compatibility type. So for example, the compatibility type of armor, the only requirement is that its type be set to the word armor. And then that'll automatically say that that's compatible. Uh, compatibility type of weapon requires either that the item type is defined as weapon or that the item type is defined as adventuring gear and the subtype is defined as ammunition. So this allows things like arrows uh, to be created. So uh, arrows can, uh, if I had an arrow here on the equipment and a magic item weapon template here on the right, it allows me to combine them to create arrows of slaying or arrows plus one or, or whatever. Uh, so both of those types are available. There's a compatibility type of arcane focus, which, uh, looks for the rod, staff, or wand as the in the name, and the item type being adventuring gear and its subtype being at arcane focus. There's compatibility type for ring, potion, scroll, and then a general one for adventuring gear. Now, if you use your own types, your own custom created types, Fantasy Grounds will not allow you to combine them in the forge. Fantasy Grounds only looks at those specific predefined uh, item types uh, or compatibility types. If you have the type blank uh, on both the template and the equipment, it will allow you to combine them. So there's, there's little tweaks that you can make if you want to force things to be able to combine. Um, but uh, in general, it has to resolve to one of the specified compatibility types in order for the forge to allow you to, uh, to create the new entries from it. All right, so that's our basic item record. Now let's take a look at parcels. Parcels are a way of giving items to our players. Uh, they, they are a consolidated way of giving treasure. So when we create a parcel, it comes up with our basic entry here, and uh, we have a name for our parcel. Here on the left-hand side, we have a series of coin values. Now. This has an additional one AD here because I had set up currency. I had added this new currency AD. Um, so that's a, a default currency now. So the parcels have that. Uh, that's not part of the standard fifth edition rule set. Uh, so you can just go ahead and ignore that. If you wanted to add a new currency type here, you can just edit the list and, uh, and add something here like, you know, bronze pieces. Let's say there's five of them. And then on the left side, of course, it's just the number of, uh, of that type of coin. On the right-hand side here, we have our items. So to give items, we'll just go ahead and drag and drop the items here into the item name or the item field. We've got our brooch, we've got our poison dagger, and our flame blade hand axe. So now that we've generated all of these things, we can save this and we can give this to our players. So if I have a player, I can open up his record, come here to his inventory tab, let me shrink this down a little bit, and I can give this directly to the player just by dragging and dropping. Now, you'll notice when it does, it goes ahead and gives the entries, the hand axe uh, and poison dagger and everything will, will appear here. But in addition, it will also go ahead and copy over if there are additional coin types I've got now five bronze pieces that have been added because I created that coin type. Uh, and it, it, any spillover will, will fill out on this list. I can also use the parcel to give it to the entire party so that the players can determine who will take what. And I do that here on the party sheet. I come up here to the inventory tab. Uh, I've already bought a bunch of junk here. We'll quickly remove that. We can add our parcel to the party sheet. And you'll notice when I do that, 
it additionally creates any empty fields which didn't exist before and uh, I can players can then of course select the items that they want to take or the the DM can divvy them out that way so that's your basic parcel uh, there are a few little tricks that can be handy when when you're dealing with parcels um, and one thing I do want to point out when you're creating a parcel uh, let's reopen this test parcel is that the item entries here are not references to the original item entry they are copies so when an item is added to here it creates a new copy here on the item record itself so if I were to open up this abacus I can tweak it and it won't change the item entry for abacus another thing to note is I can create an item directly on the parcel I can call this whatever a b c d e f and I have this new item and I can set up its properties I can change how it looks and you know all, all of its entry um, fields but this does not create an item record for it there is no item record because it's fully self-contained within here but if I create it and I later decide oh you know what this might be something useful to have um, to be able to give out multiple times not just associated with this parcel I can create an item record for it just by dragging and dropping this record onto the items window and then it'll you'll see it'll copy over and now it has its own item record so there are a couple of little things with the parcel uh, record that can be handy it can be useful when you are um, or, or ways to use it one of the things that has bugged me uh, in the past and I've been asked about uh, many times is how do I charge a player for something how do I give the party something um, and charge them for it so that it automatically deducts the coins now there is a an excellent extension the Dulux Oz extensions that has kind of full-fledged uh, store functionality built into it I highly recommend it um, if you want to do something a little simpler there is a way to simulate this using parcels so if we go ahead and create our new parcel and let's say we're going to be selling an abacus I'm just giving it a name here and I have this abacus record uh, I want to copy the abacus uh, onto here because this is something I want to give to my players so to create this I'm creating a parcel with just the single item entry in it now, looking at the item entry I see that an abacus cost two gold so what I'm going to do here in the currency section is put the negative value so if I put negative two as the gold piece now the effect of this is that when I give this to a player it's going to first give the item entry and then deduct the gold pieces from it so you can see here he does not currently have an abacus by giving this to him or hold on let me take a look here he has 31 gold left so by dragging and dropping it it gives him the abacus item and now he has 29 gold so I've just simulated a storefront uh, or, a, or an item purchase for this now this is a little more work uh, to set it all up there is I have posted a version of the entire SRD uh, set up this way so all of the SRD items they're available on the fantasy grounds forums um, is set up as a simple store and the way I did it uh, was creating a parcel for each item in the SRD and then I created a story entry uh, we'll say this is the general store and I created individual line entries for each item and uh, two gold pieces with the price and then I went and shared this with my players so that from the players they now have access to this story entry and they can drag and drop any of these parcel entries onto their character sheet and they will be able to automatically purchase that item um, for the cost now it's important to note that this will not keep track if you go negative <coughs> so uh, the players do have to keep track of uh, the amount of coins that they have remaining to make sure that they can afford it otherwise it will allow them to go negative thank you